Hi there, this is breaking news. Cregan Stark has been cast for House of the Dragon Season 2. He will be played by actor Tom Taylor. That This is confirmed, this is not speculation, we have reliable internal sources for all of this. Cregan Stark is the Stark in this prequel era. This is huge news because while the Targaryens have two large branches of the family with like six or seven people in them, the great houses like the Lannisters in this don't have the dozen or more side characters from the novels, many of which were cut from the TV show. No, even in the books, there's like three or four at most in each of the other great houses, like the Lannisters have the uh, the twins, Jason Tyland, and, and maybe his wife. The Starks, even fewer. It's really just Krieg and Stark at this one time period. But he rules for decades, so he's a very important character, and his children become important, but they're not even born yet. At this time, in this prequel era, during the Dance of the Dragons, Krieg and Stark is House Stark for this time period. Well, who is Tom Taylor, this new actor that is it's confirmed with this? He's actually another actor from The Last Kingdom. He was young Uhtred in the first episode before they skipped to the present day. They cast a couple of people from Last Kingdom on this show that Ewan Mitchell, who plays Amond, or Thea Saban, who plays his sister Helena, they were also both from The Last Kingdom. But that was, of course, some years ago. I mean, he was a kid then. That He's grown up since then. Tom Taylor is actually 22 years old now. But he's had some good acting experience since then through his young career. Uh, he actually played the lead character, Jake Chambers, in 2017's Dark Tower movie. Which I know that the movie wasn't that great, but in terms of acting experience, he was the lead kid in a major movie alongside Idris Elba. And from 2015 to 2017, he had a main role on the British series Dr. Foster, where he played the 13-year-old son of the titular character Dr. Gemma Foster, whose, whose husband was having an affair with a character played by Jodie Comer. So he's had regular TV gigs, he's done headlined movies and things. Last but most notable to us, though, is back in 2015 years ago, he's grown up since then, he guested for two episodes on the TNT spy thriller Legends. Uh, the first two episodes of season two, which are in flashback scenes to like the 1970s, as the younger version of the main character. The main character who is played by Sean Bain. <laughs> Ned Stark. So, the actor Tom Taylor, who they cast as Ned's ancestor, Cregan Stark, actually played a young 13-year-old version of Sean Bain in, in, a, in a TV show. That officially, casting directors think that Tom Taylor looks like a, a young Sean Bain, a young Ned Stark, or could be related to him. So you're talking about the look or anything, the casting directors already think he has the Stark look. Uh, some nuts and bolts behind the scenes here. Uh, this leak was first reported today, I'm just racing this out, by Brazilian fan channel House the Dragon over Twitter. But they're part of the same spy info ring with, shout out here, House of the Dragon Croatia, Realm of the Dragon, and Redanian Intelligence. And I've said before on my channel that in, in order to coordinate reporting on leaks, I'm part of the same private Discord server that they are. And they told me, don't report on things until we can confirm it. And Tom Taylor was one of a dozen names going around for Krieg and Stark. I might have mentioned before, but I said, we didn't have any firm leads so I wasn't going to taunt you with it, that we really, they man, I'm surprised they managed to keep it this close to the chest. The one reason Tom Taylor was on our radar, initially, before this, weeks ago, is that he had had friended Harry Collette, the Jace Valarian actor, over Instagram. They were following each other, but that could be said of a dozen actors, so it wasn't firm enough proof or anything, so we're not trying to make clickbait. We're the real leak reporters actually trying to give reports of substance and only say things we can confirm. So he was one of a dozen guys on our list. We were frustrated at how few leads there were. But then this came out, and after discussing it with House the Dragon and these other channels over Discord just now, 
they are staking their reputations on this. They said they have verbal leaks from more than one person who was a reliable leak source in the past, and they trust them. And because reputation matters, you can't just make clickbait and go, oh, forget about it, it doesn't matter, I made a fake report last week. It's, if you keep making bad reports, stop listening to someone. But if someone reliably weighs what they say or don't say, that there's this thing called reputation for being a good news source. So what I'm saying is I'm 99.9% .9 that Tom Taylor is Cregan Stark. They've staked their reputation on this. I believe them. They just said it was verbal info from more than one person. But they can really confirm it. This is in contrast with... The, the whole point is, this is a contrast with the Jane Aaron leak, where I saw spy photos they shared with me of written documents that list Amanda Collin as Jane Aaron. That is 100% confirmed. This was, okay, it was verbal, but it was from more than one person from set reporters. Tom Taylor is Cregan Stark. So I'm sorry just to yelling about this, but you've seen so much clickbait and it didn't matter. I hope the fact that I haven't been jumping on every fake Cregan leak for the past, oh, four or five months, but I waited until we were this certain that I imagine by tonight, Redanian Intelligence will have typed up an article about this too. They're just in a different time zone, but this is all really confirmed. We just can't say how exactly we know, but it's a very reliable source. So I was on the on the fence about reporting on this, but they, they wrote back, we stake our reputation on this. Fair enough, I've come to trust you guys, that this is big enough that if it turns out, my one thing is, I don't think someone made this up. I worry about, um, it's called a canary trap, like that thing Tyrion did in season two, where he told everyone a different name to figure out who the leak was. <laughs> Movie studios do that all the time, that... I, there's a 0.1% chance in my mind of, oh god, what if, what if uh, Warner Discovery planted fake rumors on set of who the Cregan Stark actor is to try to root out, to bait out all the leakers? That could be happening, you can, you, unless you've seen something in print, and even the print thing might have been a fake script for all I know, that they send out the canary trap thing to bait out leakers, but... This isn't someone making it up. Either this is an elaborate ruse by Warner Discovery, which you never know, but they've never done that before. That I'm, I'm pretty confident they said we stake our reputation on this. All of the leakers, multiple sources. Tom Taylor is Cregan. So I said, okay, because there will be clickbait also putting out noise about this for less justification, I'll make my report. Caution, we're pretty sure, but it's not like a spy photo of him in costume or something. It's big enough of a leak that if it turns out to have been a ploy to lure out leakers, I'll make a retraction video. But this isn't something I jumped on lightly. We have everyone really emphasizing this is a real leak. Moving on from that, I said who Tom Taylor is. Who is Cregan Stark, the character? He's the son of Rickon Stark, who we saw briefly in the first episode, that older man who was... In the montage of lords who were swearing fealty to Rhaenyra as the new royal heir in the throne room, he said, I, Rickon Stark, swear this. Uh, yes, he's named Rickon in the books, too, because names repeat in dynasties. They mention that, that there's a lot of Starks named Brandon. After their first king thousands of years ago, Bran the Builder, Brandon the Builder Stark. So, like, there's young Bran is named after so many other people. That, that they've worked in like that, but thankfully this generation doesn't have another Brandon, at least. There's a lot of those, but there's more than one person named Rickon. I mean, Cregan named his son Rickon. So, he's not really a character, though. He was already an old man, but you saw him briefly just to show, yes, the Starks exist, but he's not really a factor in the Dance of the Dragons, because including all the time skips across Season 1... Between when Queen Emma dies in the Season 1 premiere to the outbreak of the Civil War in the Season 1 finale, roughly 20 years pass. And during that time period off-screen, old Lord Rickon Stark died, but his son Cregan was still underage, so his uncle Benard Stark took over rule as his regent. Which is fine, but... Even after Cregan turned 16 years old and came of legal age, 
his uncle didn't want to give up rule and try to usurp him. So it led to this struggle within the North, within House Stark for power, that ended with Cregan wresting back his rightful rule from his uncle and imprisoning him. All this happened off-screen during the events of Season 1. I don't know if they're going to show that in flashback or just describe it in dialogue, but that's an interesting backstory. But with Bernard and all of Cregan's cousins gone, because they were imprisoned or whatever... Cregan's parents are dead, uh, he has no other legitimate siblings, and he was married, but by the time Jace reaches Winterfell, his wife has recently died, and all he's left with is one infant son, who he also names Rickon, but who's not a character in this time period because he's a baby. So really, the only Stark is Cregan. But I said no legitimate members of the Starks, that there's two Stark characters in the whole thing that we'd actually see. The second one is a bastard. Cregan's bastard half-sister, Sarah Snow. Not named Stark, but you know, the character, and a lot of people looking forward to that, because there's all these rumors that she fell in love with Jace when he met her. And it's one of those unreliable narrator moments from the novels of... Did they or didn't they? Exactly what did they do? How did Cregan react to it? We're not really sure. Because there's multiple conflicting accounts. So we have Cregan's Stark cast. That leads to the question of there's really only one other Stark family member of note in this time period. What do we know about Sarah Snow casting? I have remarked on this before. It's only slightly better than the search for Cregan. Because there were so many candidates we couldn't just focus on every young woman who happened to be following a cast member on Instagram. But we do think we've narrowed it down to two strong candidates. We think Sarah Snow is either going to be actress Erica Ford or actress Raffaella Chapman, based on their Instagram follows and whether they join the cast or not. Uh, both Erica and Raffaella have briefly appeared in other HBO projects. It stands to reason that whoever they cast as Sarah will probably be someone they're familiar with that they can do a good job. Erica was briefly in that The Nevers show, in, in flashbacks for a character, and Raffaella was like in one episode of His Dark Materials, so they're the top of the list, as opposed to other points where I threw up my hands and said, we have no idea who could be playing this. We have these two candidates. And at this point, it's down to judging their looks, which I hate doing because it's subjective. That Erica Ford, to me at least, looks more like Arya, with that classic Stark look. That Arya, they say Arya has the Stark look like Lyanna. But Raffaella has more of that thin, waifish look to her. And I'd like her to be in the cast, I just don't know if she'd be Sarah, because there's speculation that Sarah Snow will be like close to the old gods. She might be a skin changer or a seer or something. We have no evidence for that. Just, I would make that change if I was there, but you never know if they'll actually go and do that. So, are they going for more of a waifish, thin, mysterious character, or more someone who really looks like Arya? I have no idea whatsoever. Just letting you know, sharing with you, these are names that were floating around. Oh, and... While I'm going over Sarah Snow casting rumors, if you haven't checked in for the past couple of weeks, but did now because, you know, Cregan Stark casting is a pretty big announcement, what are the other big Season 2 casting rumors that we've had so far? That I've made videos on all of these. Please subscribe and check out the rest of my channel if you haven't been going over this too clearly the past two months or so while they were filming. Short version, I'm not even going to make separate slides for this, just running down a list of the FAQs of, of the casting situation. When they started filming in April, they officially announced, possibly because it would have leaked out from spy photos, but they announced that Alice Rivers, the Witch of Harrenhal, will be played by Gail Rankin, and that Alan of Hull will be played by Abu Bakar Salim, who is father on Raised by Wolves. And then back in June, we got a lot of spy photos of the Dragon Seeds, the Targaryen bastards who claimed the riderless dragons in Season 2. And are really going... So this is pretty much confirmed. They're photos. We can see them. That actor Clinton Liberty will be playing Alan's brother, Adam of Hull. And Kieran Boo will be Hugh Hammer. 
we saw girls who we think are nettles, but the photo is so blurry we couldn't recognize the actress, and it might have, they were two different ones that we weren't sh really sure who it was. Nettles is still one of the big question marks on season two casting, where we don't even have suspected people. They might have cast an unknown, but those ones we pretty much figured out. And then two or three weeks ago, we got a pretty big leak, again, from the internal spy ring of everyone, and Redanian reported on this, so it's pretty much confirmed. Then they showed me these materials when I say documents are seen with my own eyes. Confirmed. Jane Aaron will be played by Amanda Collin, who was mother on Raised by Wolves. That that is completely confirmed, there's no question of that. And part of the same set of leaks was the prequel Tully's. The Tullys of River Run, who will be coming into Daemon's storyline. I actually didn't get a chance to report on that yet, because I was making it just as the Cregan news leaked. So right after this video, stick around for I'm going to talk about there was news about the prequel Tullys that have been cast. And of course, last of these, the one that a lot of people keep asking about because it's so mysterious, is Allison's fourth child, Daeron Targaryen who wasn't in season one because he was off at college in Old Town, squiring for his high tower cousins. It, they said, well, he wasn't in King's Landing. He wouldn't be part of the story. And I think they might have mentioned him in deleted scenes that they cut because why are we going to mention a character who isn't on screen? Well, to set him up. Actually, we just got movement on that, that our most strongly suspected candidate is actor Jack Cunningham Nuttall, because he was taunting us over Instagram that once we started suspecting based on his follows, you know, it might be him. He started posting images of a blue dragon plushie, because his uh, Daron's dragon is blue. So he knows that we suspect him, and maybe it's just an actor screwing with us, maybe it's because he really was cast, that we have suspects for him. So, And there's other characters I'm not going to get in here, like we know who's playing Blood and Cheese, we know who's playing Marilda of Holder Mother... Like, the one big question mark is Nettles. Everyone else we at least have suspects for, of characters that are going to be on screen in Season 2. Not everyone's going to be on screen in Season 2, though, I caution. Like, I don't think the Greyjoys, Dalton Greyjoy, won't probably be on screen until Season 3. I mean, they, they might mention him in dialogue, but I don't think he'll actually be on screen. So there's other characters who will pop up over time. All of the Blackwoods who are major characters who they are even investing time to set up in Season 1 of the Blackwood Bracken feud. They join opposite sides of the war. We still don't know who those are because they're so young, they'd probably be casting unknowns anyway. That's just running down the other people that are going... Uh, names we mention in the casting lists. One thing I want to leave you on, though, another... Check out the casting videos I made, and then a story leak video that directly relates to Cregan. We got all of these leaked spy photos, this is real, this isn't rumor, that they are building a full physical set for a section of the wall, at least in studios, you know, with the Night's Watch, and then we saw video of a dozen Night's Watch rangers riding around for a night scene in the forest, that we're going to see the, the wall in the Night's Watch again, which didn't happen in the book, but they're reasonably close to Winterfell that we think they're inventing that there's going to be this trip by Jason Cregan to the Wall. Or maybe not. It might be the Night's Watch has a scene, and then, like, one ranger comes to Winterfell to report on it. So under that broad umbrella, it's part of Cregan's story. I don't know if he physically goes to the Wall, but that is going to be part of this. And there's all sorts of questions this raises of the revelations in Season 1 that Targaryens are motivated by that Aegon the Conqueror had this prophetic dream of the White Walkers returning that he called the Song of Ice and Fire. I mean, the alliance that Jace and Cregan make, it just mentions in passing in, in the book, their alliance was called the Pact of Ice and Fire, which is a really loaded term. There are all sorts of questions of, did Aegon the Conqueror tell King Torrin Stark, the last Stark King, about this prophecy because he thought the Starks are the only people who would take the potential return of the White Walkers seriously if I told them about it. Or maybe not. Maybe Jace is the one that has to tell Cregan, because we're pretty sure... After Viserys died and Rhaenyra is now queen, there must have been a, a scene off-screen where she pulled Jace aside and said, You are now my heir. 
I have to pass down to you that there's this secret prophecy that I think we'll see that in flashback at the beginning of season two when Jace tells Cregan about it. Question is, did Cregan already know or not that they would take that... Cons what are they going to talk about with this wider mythos thing that they're expanding on this much as season one expanded on with Cregan and the Starks? So Cregan is a very important character. He goes on to have children of his own. Not in this prequel era, but in the next one, he is a major recurring character for a long time. He is the face of House Stark for this entire prequel, and for a good chunk of the next one, he actually has... He, he also has interesting stuff to do in the, in the Regency, the Aftermath era that follows this, so we are going to be with this actor for something like seven to eight more seasons. On top of that, they say that Cregan lived to be very old, and I did the math... Cregan could have been alive in the first Blackfire Rebellion. I mean, he would have been 88 years old, but they said he lived to be an old man. So, I don't know. Like, obviously, they're not going to let the actor age into that in real time. It would mean we wouldn't get a Blackfire show until 60 years from now. They'd recast an older version of this guy when they have, like, something set during the reign of Aegon the Unworthy or something. When we know he was alive, he dueled the Dragon Knight... Uh, the, the Aegon the Unworthy's brother, the Dragon Knight, they, he dueled him when he was an old man, and he said, you know, he, he was so experienced, he, he was the toughest fight I ever had, that he lives into multiple other prequel eras. And they, they might recast, like, a 60-year-old actor to play that if we get such a show within the next 10 years. But for this, and I think into a Regency show, we're looking at, like, seven to eight seasons, a decade, because there's gaps between production, Tom Taylor is Cregan Stark. He is the face of House Stark for all of this. And this leads to questions of, will he go south with his army? When I say House Stark, I mean the family. As for the North, there are other Northmen who I don't want them to condense with him, like Roderick Dustin. We'll see how they do that, because there's plot reasons it wouldn't make sense, because then, it, well, that character got killed. He would need to be alive. So we'll see how they handle that, but I'm, I'm sorry for the, the, the rush nature of this. I first heard about this two hours ago, and I raced it out Sunday as best I could. But this is the casting news we've been waiting for. Arguably this and maybe Dayron or Jane, but we got Jane and we at least have a suspect for Dayron. I am stunned that they managed to hide the Cregan Star casting for so long. And why aren't they announcing these people? I mean, there's no benefit. Maybe because of the writer's strike. They're not announcing new cast members. Then again... Season 1, they wouldn't confirm a lot of cast members until after, right up until the trailers were coming out. I'm not sure, but the, the, the strike seems to be winding down, so between now and Christmas, are we going to get a lot of casting announcements, formal acknowledgments of casting? I'm not really sure. But please check out all of the other casting videos that I've made for the past two months, if you haven't already, and the casting leak about directly related to Cregan that we will definitely see the Night's Watch and the Wall and zombies again with the White Walkers. What are they doing with Cregan here? And another question for the comments. Will they show his rise against his, his usurping Uncle Bernard? Will that be a flashback, or will they just describe that in dialogue? I'd like a flashback, but we'll see what they do.